please, please, let's get this press conference underway. There's probably a lot of people wondering why I've called this. We're three days after having qualified from the World Cup with the national team, and I've been keeping an eye on opportunities to improve the national team in any way possible so that we can reach our goals. And that's why today I've decided that with Costa Rican soccer in mind, the best place for me is not as head coach of Alajuelense. We need all clubs in Costa Rica firing on all cylinders if we're to reach our goal with the national team. Alajuelense is close to its potential. We've brought in great players. We won both stages last season in the Central American Cup. This year's going pretty well, and we're well positioned for a good CONCACAF Champions Cup run. But there's one club in Costa Rica that is not operating to its potential. That's why today I'm stepping down from Alajuelense and I'm taking over as the head coach of Saprissa. It's CONCACAF. What'd you expect? And I got a lot of work to do. So let's get after it. That's right. Is it evil? Is it backstabbing? Is it horrible? Yeah. It's CONCACAF, though. And this is a journeyman save, so we can't just stay put. I'm a little conflicted because, obviously, I went to Alajuelense and watched their game. And I'll give you a short little story, too. I actually tried to go find a Saprisa shirt to buy to have it with the name of Nellis27 that I like to put on all my kits. And throughout all of San Jose, at least all of the retailers, I mean, there's really only like two stores. There might be like a third. But it's they do a run of shirts. All of the sizes that I could wear, small's a stretch, medium usually for me, no smalls, no mediums of the Saprisa kit anywhere in San Jose. So I couldn't even get one. So I'll have to wait till the next one comes out and order it and have it shipped in if I can get one. But anyways, they're the most followed club in the country. And there's reasons why I'm taking the Saprisa job. As much as I love Alajuelense, I do. And I want them to be successful. But there's things going on. Here's what's going to happen. We're not just the government in Costa Rica. We're also the shadow government. We're not just President Biden, we're also Donald Trump, who actually really got elected. That's not something I actually believe, by the way. That's just a funny little similar situation. We're, we're basically running this country from both clubs. And maybe I'll even jump back to Alajuelense after we get things sorted out at Saprissa. But there's massive, massive potential for Saprissa to be successful. I really wanted to win a CONCACAF Champions Cup with Alahuelense, and maybe we'll accomplish that at some point in the save. But let me show you why Saprisa is kind of the club to be at for us to, you know, make a run of the CONCACAF Champions Cup, even this season, but also to um, improve the national team and try and win that Gold Cup, because that's a... that's. An objective as well. So as you can see, I'm out of a job. Well, I'm head coach of the national team. But that's all I have. Because I wanted to push this through fast. And it did. It came one day prior to when I needed it to happen. Because here's the first thing. One, I'm taking a salary cut, but I'm national team coach. And whatever, it's it doesn't actually matter. It's just money that leaves the balance from the club. So honestly, I should just play. I should just go for free. Um, but look, they just want challenge for the Central American Cup. They just want a top half finish. Like the objectives 
for the board are much lower. So I don't have to stare at that stupid, oh, we're only on course to win? Disappointed? So I'll just take the salary. For two years, we're not dropping down. I don't care about any of that. We're taking the job. Welcome to the club. Replacing Hernan Medford, who underperformed the entire time. They wear the royal purple, which I like, even though it's a bit more of a kind of a maroon. So, make the most of set pieces, that's fine. Grow the reputation, we intend to. And they don't really care about it. be competitive in the, that's the cup. Every month, that's good. Boom, we're in. I was only at Olive Olenze for about a year and a half. I love my time there. Supporters, we got pretty big old following. 9,400 or 741 season ticket holders. Yeah, we can unfollow Olive Olenze. Got some unhappiness. Like, we've got some players in this club that I need playing more often than they are and playing in the right positions and doing all that kind of stuff. So that's one of the things. We'll pick this later. I'm not going to show all, all of this stuff, but I will, excuse me, I will show you the reason why I quit and tried to get here as soon as possible because we can go ahead and win the Central American Cup from here in one game tomorrow. So we're going to watch that game today after I get things sorted out. I'll, I'll cut away. But when they beat Punta Arenas 4-1 to one with somebody getting sent off. It was 1-1 one to one when he got sent off. Or no, I'm sorry. It was 2-1, to 2-0. to zero. And then he got sent off. And then 2-1, to one, and then boom, 4-1. to one. But, um, so... I guess we're just playing one game, so who wants to be captain? This Daniel Gonzalez guy is not that good. I think Lara, honestly. I think he's Mexican. Yeah, he's a right back, Mexican right back. He's pretty solid. So, like, look at the wage. Look at the club. First of all, valued at 37 million. Saprice is only like 12 million. 18 million in the bank. $10 million transfer budget, payroll to play with. We're already on $7 million. Like, I'm, and look how many players there are. Oh, so we can call and send out on loan and, and make sure that the best players are playing for us. We've got... Do I have my... Yeah, my contract page. So we got to figure out Release fees, who we want to try and keep around. Who's who's our best players? I know for sure Rowan Wilson is good. And a very, very key player, because he's a center midfielder who actually has defensive statistics, which is very rare in Costa Rica. I know we have this youngster, Edwin Cruz, on Duran that they picked up, who's... Apparently, they changed his playing time, so he's mad about something. This Beal guy, he's wanted by a club in... That's Pro El Arabi or whatever, I think, is... Um, oops. Qatar. So he's good. He's 28. You know, I'm, I apologize for this. I am annoyed anytime I look at a video that I'm editing and I realize that I'm blocking this because I change which side I'm on. And I realize you probably want to see that. So I like to see it kind of big, but we'll just put it next to the analysis. We'll go attribute analysis up there just so you can see it as well. I like to see the big version, but just so you can... So I'm not blocking it because honestly, it's more important for you to get a quick snapshot of somebody than me because I'm an, in the nitty gritty here. So I'll put that up there. But he's solid. 
but he's got a release fee, 1.7 million. Jorge Fuentes is another, he's an international slot guy who's another kind of number 10, but I think we're overloaded with those, honestly, because I'd like to play this winger, and they haven't been playing a winger for a while, this Jimmy Espinosa guy. He's Costa Rican youngster. Laura, we looked at, he's the right back. Barcelo, here's another reason why I want to come to Saprisa. Goalkeepers. I've been struggling with Costa Rican goalkeepers. And this guy is probably going to be the starter for the national team for some time to come. So there's also Chamorro, who's got caps. We might actually move this guy on. And then there's the other youngster, Alfaro. So I want to see how good this guy can be as well. We actually have a goalkeeping battle between goal two goalkeepers that I think are both better than Solis. Um, this is another international guy they brought in, this 18-year-old Cameroonian center back, who actually looks okay. He is injury prone, but it looks like he's got potential. 5'11". Not as good as the Honduran we brought in to Alajuelense, but still good. Roy Ramirez, good youngster, center midfield type player. I'll probably play him here. He's got a left foot. He is solid. Um, Badia is a decent left back. I played this guy for his first cap in that game against El Salvador. So he's pretty good. Uh, Marco Vega. Yeah, this defensive midfielder might end up being pretty important for the national team because he's a, a center midfielder who can relatively tackle. So he's okay. This is like who they've been playing up top for a long time. And he's got seven finishing. And I don't, he's not that great. I think they have this Will Sands guy who's got an American second nationality backup left back. Okay. Chamorro, Chacon, who's been pissy with the national team. So hopefully we can fix his mentality by playing him where he wants to play or whatever. And then, yeah, we'll look through the youngsters and see what we got. But I'll get the team ready to go. There's other things I gotta do, obviously, that I like to do. Take a look at dynamics. Iffy on the support, don't worry about it. We'll get we'll get that fixed up here pretty soon. Figure out what who's all unhappy about what, see what we can fix. Yeah, change his playing time. Jimmy Espinosa wants to play more games. Great, because he's going to. Chacon is going to be a regular starter. Um, I think only one staff member from Saprisa actually left. When I when I quit, which is kind of disappointing, but I'm happy they're keeping their full complement of staff because they have a very good staff. But speaking of, Brian Ruiz is caretaker head coach. Oh, he should be the head coach. Hopefully now that he's got this head co caretaker head coach on his resume, he'll either get a job somewhere else or they just make him the man because he should be the head coach of Hollow Um, Let's see. Have they done any craziness? They listed Pablo Sanchez. Yeah, this guy's terrible. They listed Fernando Alvarez for 700K, who we're still trying to bring him into the national team. But we could register him. We could bring him in. 700K, that might not be a bad deal. They listed Quesada Thorn. He's honestly not as good. Good as I thought he was. He's not as good defensively as you would like a wing back to be. But the usefulness of playing both sides, yeah, he's worth the 650k. 100%. Will he come here? He was here before. Yeah. And he might even take a pay cut. Yo. Wants a minimum fee release clause. Wait, he wants to play left winger as a round doiter. I mean, honestly, maybe, but 
it's tough to find guys that can play both sides fullback or wingback rather, but he's, we're definitely going in for him. You better believe it. Let's see actually if they'll take less. They might. Yeah, we'll just, we'll just spend the whole thing. Who else? Uh, Montenegro. Yeah, I don't love this guy. He did have an insane, insanely good season for us when I first got there. The rating isn't great, but he scored a lot of goals. And Contreras. Who's, I like him a little bit more because he's more well-rounded. His mentals are a bit better. And he's been pretty solid. Both years that I was there. We might bring Contreras in. Montenegro's only listed for 275. That might be worth it. Fernando Alvarez. We might bring all three of these guys in, to be honest. Because they're probably just going to sit and rot there if they're listed. And they could help us with depth. We'll take a look at the Saprisa team, though. I got to do staff. I got to do... My assistant coach is on almost as much money as I am. Oh, he's pretty good, though. He was caretaker for a couple days. So I'll do what work I can, and then we'll come back and play this Punta Reynas game after I sort out the tactic and stuff like that. But yeah, that's right. We're the shadow government, and we're the real government. And we're going to make Costa Rica a force. At both places. All right, we'll be back for the game. Okay, we've done some work. We've gone in for Quesada Thorn. We're going to do a little bit more work while you're here. I'm going to go in for... No, we already we just put an offer in for this guy and they rejected it. They have him listed for 700. We tried to talk him down. They wouldn't budge. We could use another center back. But we're back for the game. We have haven't hired any staff, but I've put in contracts, contract offers for all of these positions to up our staff. I've pissed off a couple players. One, because I moved him down into under 20s because I think he's not that great. And he plays right back. He's like a third choice right back. But he was like their starter before I got here, but I think this guy's a little bit better. Anyways, what we're really struggling with is strikers because they've been playing this Daniel Gonzalez guy up top and he's just, he's a false nine, I suppose. But he's got... The physicals just aren't there. He's 21. He's almost up to his potential. This was also the team captain. So I stripped him of the captaincy. I don't know where I'm going to play him. I'm probably going to try and sell him because he's on 300. And we're starting this guy. He's all right, actually. He looks pretty okay to me. He doesn't have very high potential either, but I don't think he hasn't really played a, a bunch so we're going to go with him for now. And then we might have to go into the transfer market. We're playing this system. It's essentially this, but a little bit. It's got a little more chest hair with the Trecarista or Trecartista and ball winning midfielder support over here on this side. Roaming playmaker over here. I'm using roles that I don't usually use. Ball playing defender, I usually just play straight up central defenders. No nonsense center back cover. I don't think I showed you this center back. He's okay. But yeah, depth. I mean, we've got this Camden guy and then this Azafefa guy. I, don't, I just don't think this guy's very good. He's got 13 caps. He's all right, I guess. But I kind of like Alvarez a little bit better. Um, yeah, advanced playmaker on the right, mostly because I have one guy that I want to train in that role. It's Jorge Fuentes guy, because he's got the pace. He just doesn't have any crossing. So we're training him out here because I have, I'm overloaded with number 10s with this Daniel Gonzalez and Jorge Fuentes. No, that's the one I just showed you. We have Jimmy Espinosa, who's going to play over here, but Beal is obviously very good. And it's Jorge Vargas. 
who looks like a pretty good high potential kind of 19 year old. Number 10, as well. But this is what we're going with. We're starting the young goalkeeper and we're playing against Punta Arenas. Oh, I haven't set up set pace routines. Uh, I don't care about this. Like it's, I'll go come back in and tweak it probably later, but pretty standard. I go hybrid, I go near post, I go, let's go kind of forward-ish counterattack or defensive or rather with the counterattack. We'll go for the near post. We'll keep it balanced. We'll go for the end swingers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's fine. I'm happy with that. I don't. It's not that crucial. Um, Beal had a. He's got interest coming in from Puebla, so he offered him a contract to get rid of his release clause. And he actually took a pay cut, down to I think three sixty three, three eighty something like that. But the team's kind of happy. I had the team talk, and he's we're already everybody's already turning the corner on me a little bit. Cut off a bunch of the riffraff. There's so many players in the under 20, so we really have to work on building up a loan farm out to the other teams in Costa Rica. And then, you know, get a little money in the door that way too. That'd be good. And then figure out who we want to buy. Because I might offload that other Honduran, the one who's training on the right wing. It's the away leg against Punta Arenas. I lost to them here, Dalahua Lenze, but we've got a three goal cushion. We just need to close it out to lift our second Central American Cup. Hilarious that we might win this competition, despite losing, going out. We should, it's four to one. It's a new system and it's a new coach, but hey. First game in charge at Saprissa. You saw Captain Nellis. This is we we're doing We're doing some shady business here now, going over to our rivals. So activate Dark Nellis. That's what's happening. But can we close this one out? Shot goes over the bar. Can we get a goal in my first game in charge? Beal has a release clause of 1.7 million, I think. And his uh, he's got some attention coming in from Mexico, I believe, or maybe even Brazil. He's Brazilian. So, yeah, that's the space that we're kind of leave. Leal! Is he onside? Yes, he is. The striker that I picked, who's not really played all that much, takes a peach of a shot. Padilla, nice. Straight to the striker. One touch, slow it down, and then just placement. Rock him the number 41. Nice. Praise him? Yeah, this might be early for that. Probably take Beal out. We might also play Beal on the right wing a little bit. We're a little bit thin on wingers because they haven't, because they've been shifting away from that in their system. So get the other guy trained up on that side. I don't really like that was a save from Barcelo. It's a good one. I don't really like playing playmakers on the wings but I don't mean whatever we might go for it we might give it a shot then we might end up switching the system into just a plain 4-3-3 five one aggregate I like it Dominating possession, we need to get them on our side. So we're just as much green in the press talks as possible. You gotta you gotta learn what to say. Alright, Vargas is actually injured. 
So we're going to give the other guy his first attempt. It is Jorge Fuentes. Beal is not playing good. So Jimmy Espinosa comes in. Plenty of time. They're both complacent because we're owning Punta Arenas, which is good. Go back balanced. Cruz isn't doing too good. We'll bring on um, Jorge Vargas. He can't play a Trek, though. I forget if he's training it. I might be training him as a Trek. No, this is the one that I'm actually training as a midfielder for Ramirez. Who am I playing here? Oh, am I training Daniel Gonzalez as a Trek? No, but I should. But he's only got, like, his physicals, he's he's like an engaunch, kind of. But we'll do that, I guess. He's wound up. He's actually, he's still pissed at me. Or he's going to be pissed at me for a while. You know what? We'll just leave him on the bench. I might even look to sell him. Selling the captain. Uh, Vargas does need to learn this position, though. Marone Wilson's on a yellow. So we're going to bring on Vega, pretty sure. Yep. It is Vega. And then we'll leave the defense for now. Make a late, late sub. Get that tackle in. Espinoza, Jimmy, Jimmy E, low cross in, good little foot in there from Gonzalez. That's that weird moment where I have to relearn all the players in my team now. I thought I was going to be at Alahulenzi for a long time. And this job was even available for about a week and I was like, no, I'm not going to, I wonder who they'll hire. I wonder who they'll hire. And then I clicked on them and I went, I looked at their facilities and I was like, they're only like good, like three star facilities. Like they have all this money. Why aren't they using it? Camden is back in. He's going to come in for, he can come in for Gonzo. Close it out. Playing a very similar system to what I was working with at Alahulense. Some might say I only have one coaching tactical style. Espinosa almost scores that, just wide. I've got a couple tricks up my sleeve. But I definitely do like a 4-2-3-1. Especially when you have like a world-class number 10. And we won the Central American Cup. We lost to Punta Arenas, so I quit so we could beat Punta Arenas and win the Central American Cup. That's not exactly why, but it is kind of hilarious. Saprisa. El monstro mercado. Purple monster gets another trophy. And we get a buy in the CONCACAF Champions Cup to the round of 16. Defense played good. Padilla in particular played really well. Seemed a little happier. Uh, nice job. You did well. He scored a goal. 1-0 win. I'll take it. With all the complacency, 
We beat Punta Arenas. Pretty sure Alajuelense they beat Montagua, so they finished third. Uh, Vargas got a little bit injured. Beal, they were training him somewhere else. I forget, oh, as a number 10. There's enough of those in this team. We get 200k for it. I'm in the North American Hall of Fame. Somewhere. Here we are. Number 19. They're happy. I'm happy. 160k. They were Punta Arenas was the biggest overachievers. That probably makes sense. Because they're like only Yeah, they're the fifth best team. Wait, let's actually look at that. Can I pull that up again with the full? That's just showing Alahulanze. Sometimes it'll show it, sometimes it doesn't. It's weird. Nope. Anyways, what's going to happen now is we're going to have a transfer window coming up here in a few days. So we got some time to do some scouting, get our staff in, get prepped. And then they'll schedule this stuff. And then I guess we can look at our own schedule because we were part of this competition last year, weren't we? Champions Cup playout round. Yeah, it's February. We might kick on a bit. Maybe we'll come back for the first game where we play against Alahuelense with me in charge because that'll be interesting. So you might do that. That might happen around here because then we're not going to play a Champions Cup game until like March. So we'll have the draw for that and then we'll play against our, our boys and see what happened in the transfer window. And that will be the next episode. But thanks for watching. Please like the video, it helps me out, and comments and all that stuff helps helps bring other people in if they want to watch some CONCACAF madness. Something I don't think other people are really bringing to the table. In the realm of football manager videos, so I appreciate that guys. Thanks again for watching, we'll see you next time. Take care. <laughs>